Hello everyone. Thank you very much for inviting us. Uh, thank you very much for the to the NAL, the, the Norwegian Architectural League, for inviting us, and thank you very much, Snow Hatter, for hosting us. Um, we are very glad that we were invited to this lecture, and uh, I have to say that we were um, also surprised a little bit, <laughs> and we thought, "Wow, that's brave! Such a young office <laughs> to invite uh, um, here." But we are. The reason why we are invited is, uh, as it was mentioned before, the, uh, our book, Something Fantastic, which actually was started as our thesis in, in, in school. Um, uh, the, the, the book, Something Fantastic, is, uh, it started as a very open, uh, open um, research on, on how we see architecture today. Um, and we, we actually started with uh, a lot of reading. It was an open, an open process. We didn't know where it leads to. So uh, we started with reading, and one part of the book is the, the excerpts we, we excerpted, we, we took from, from books that we've read, that we thought that should be read as an architect, uh, but we actually never had the chance in the, in the, while studying to really do it. So one part is this, this excerpts, and we then uh, started to, to interview people that, are, um, that came across our mind in this research. And um, for example, Markus Wiesen, he's a uh, Berlin-based uh, uh, architect. He's also, I think, he will be a guest here in, in, in Oslo. Um, and then we, we made from this, Things we, we from the, the the excerpts and the interviews we came up with some some plans to how to um, develop really ideas and and really make projects from all that uh, theoretical um, knowledge. Um, there are ten projects of this kind. Um, we will talk about especially this project later. Um, we call it the Dumpling Express, and then we. Uh, made texts. In the end, we made the texts that now are the the beginning of the book that show our opinion on how architecture should or how architects should work and how what architecture should achieve or try to achieve. And um, in the end, in the very end, we put the um, we came up with this four beliefs that are now the beginning of, of our book. Um, I don't want to read them. You can read it in the book. Actually, I have to mention that we only brought ten copies. Um, <laughs> um, so, first ones win. Um, but we have ten copies of another book uh, we also worked on, so... <laughs> fine for that. So, um, but as, this is a premiere for us as well, um, not only for the NAL, but also for us um, to talk about our uh, um, our office and and what we think that architecture should be. Um, we call it the lecture number one, and we won't give you a review of our project, <coughs> but a preview. So we try to um, show you how we as architects work in Berlin. I mean, you will see certainly see how, how our approach is maybe different to, to some other uh, um, approaches and so we came up with the 13 goals for 2011 and I hope that you or we hope that you find also the, the our wider perspective on architecture in that sometimes very small um, goals. So Elena will start with goal number one. Yeah, um, actually, the cool thing about uh, presenting these goals in front of you is for us also that it gives us um, sort of the strength to maybe realize them because if they're not achieved uh, by the end of the year, then it's even harder for us um, as we present them in front of you now. So um, the first thing is it's a, that's a comparably small goal. It's it's actually. Uh, these lamps that we put up in our office, they are made from styrofoam, the very 
cheap material that um, is usually, usually, usually used for uh, insulation. And it has this nice effect that, that um, if, you, if you put the corners um, in a very, uh, at the tip, the, the light can come out of the, um, of the lamp and it, uh, it has an interesting effect. And um, these already exist, but only three. And um, our idea for this year is, um, or our goal is to actually publish um, a manual that you can get for free to um, build your own lamps. Um, because um, basically we think it's actually a nice idea to, to give away ideas. Um, and to, um, yeah, and there's, there's two things that are nice about it. Uh, on the one hand, it gives you the chance to like really spread an idea. Like I, I guess some of you know these examples of um, furniture that are um, designed by Enzo Mari, and um, instead of just selling them as a product, he um, he published uh, instructions to build them for yourself. And um, one thing that is nice about publishing um, uh, your design instead of just selling is it is that um, you get something back in a way. Like for example, that table um, that he did, it's, it's the EFFE table and um, he published it. And um, what people did with it was actually um, inventing a way of, um, um, the, that's actually an interpretation of the table because this one was um, put together from uh, uh, sh IKEA shelves. And um, people sort of interpret um, his designs and um, it, it already started a little bit with our lamp because um, a friend of us um, built a lamp um, according to that to that idea, even though we haven't really published the manual yet. But um, like I said, that would be uh, the first small goal for this year. Yeah, goal goal number one, uh, goal number two. <laughs> is um, we call the Arcadia. It's a book. It's going to be a book. Um, it's uh, derived from the idea that um, of, of how to deal with the topic, or how to deal with nature. And the, the, um, the idea that, um, that man and nature can live in, in, in harmony is, somehow is, is something that is present in that idea of Arcadia. Of course, it's a, it's a region in, in, in Greece and there's a lot of stories about it. And I, I'm sure everybody has an idea on Arcadia. And um, what we are especially interested in, in that, or why we are interested in that topic is because it's, um, for us, it's, a, it's this close, clo very close connection of man and nature that is uh, um, inherent in that idea, so that both man and nature can be in a very lush, in a very sometimes rough, in a very sophisticated way next to each other. So for us, it's an idea of um, also again or against the the mediocrity of, of uh, that the whole world is a is acres and small family houses. Um, and that this idea of living in the nature is is uh, making everything flat and everything um, mediocre somehow. So um, we just came up with this. We just produced this uh, this collage to show you what we mean. But um, the book we are going to to produce is uh, is about Berlin. And there's one idea which is already present in Berlin, is these uh, paintings, wall paintings, on a cafe uh, from the, this is a cafe, it existed Unter den Linden in, I think, 19, until, until the war, of course, but this is a picture from 1902. And there, the Arcadian landscape is somehow in a very, for us, in a very, it's a nice contrast to see this, this lush nature and the, the remains of a very sophisticated, culturally um, sophisticated uh, um, uh, city or, or remains of a city. So what we're going to show you and what will be in the book is um, uh, photographs of Berlin because we find that in Berlin. Berlin is a, 
of course, it's it's very it was very destroyed in the in the war, and it still has these uh, empty zones. And these empty zones, after 50 years, are very lush and very um, natural, even if it's only an image of nature. But it's a it's an interest for us. It's a very interesting um, picture. It's it's just pictures. So, for example, this is out of our university, um, a picture facing toward the tear garden. This is uh, a high rise in the tear garden in the Hansa Viertel, which is a, a modern uh, uh, reconstruction. It's called IBA. It's like a um, where yeah construction exhibition that took place in the 1960s in in Berlin. And also these buildings now stand in a very lush very lush uh, forest and this for example is very close to Potsdamer Platz, it's Gleisdreieck, it's just uh, if you would see the other direction you would see the high rises of Potsdamer Platz but in this direction it also has this lush moment and the interference between the two maybe opposites but I mean, of course we hope that it won't be opposites in the end. And why we are going to, or why we pronounce it here as a book is because we, we don't know exactly how this will, or where this will lead in the end. We just know that the issue of, of dealing with the, the with nature of our um, relation between, uh, the relation between nature and man is a very, uh, uh, very interesting and very, challenging topic and to produce a book is for us one step toward maybe someone else reads that book and may, makes a project out of it or I mean we don't have the solutions yet this is for example in, in that's very close to uh, Alexanderplatz and it's a it's an old cemetery but it's also again this nice contrast and this is uh, Unter den Linden or next to one parallel street to Unter den Linden um, and this is like the, for us it's the, um, the, the, the typical image of what we mean. This forest, the lush nature, and then there's the modernist building and the ruins of some 19th century um, uh, church. So this is what we think about when we think about Arcadia and Berlin and our relation between nature and man. Okay, um, goal number three is, is uh, a follow-up of, of our seminar at the University of the Arts. It's called Warum sieht das so aus, which means why does that look like that? Um, and our first seminar, <coughs> uh, which, which we are currently teaching also, at, <coughs> always has one question as, as the topic of each lecture, which are kind of random. And for us also, it's more um, about uh, posing the question, uh, <coughs> uh, is, is equally important than what actually is the subject matter at that, at that um, at that lecture, um, uh, the first lecture, uh, uh, the question was how, how to become a successful architect, and we always, always invite some people, and then we kind of create this space where uh, by us posing questions, actually the students also pose a lot of questions, um, and uh, to get uh, um, a certificate for that shine, they actually have to come up with that one question that they would like to have answered and somehow have to try to find that answer in, it, in whatever way they want. Um, uh, um, something that we find, and also I think by doing that book, that's what, one of the great things we kind of learned. That, um, it's, it's very nice. Uh, uh, a, if you if you actually pose that question to yourself, and also B, it, it's not that hard to get an answer. You just have to ask someone. <clears throat> and but what we will do next term is uh, we had one lecture called "Warum sieht das so aus?" Why does it look like that? Where um, we posed 
ourselves that question standing in front of this building, which is, is very typical for <laughs> a lot of building projects in Berlin right now. It's a hotel, and there's like a new hotel each week, <clears throat> or at least that's how it feels. Um, so, and this is in a very prominent location, like um, it, it could have been better, I guess, but uh, what, what we did was we, we invited the, the investor of that building and the architect to build it, and uh, they answered that question very, very uh, straightforward, basically, why does it look like that? Um, uh, so that was a very rewarding lecture that worked very well, and we thought, okay, there's lots of, lots of things we kind of would like to investigate in that same way. And uh, one thing is, uh, uh, is the Albanian coast, so we will spread that, make it much wider now, can be uh, different things. And the Albanian coast um, looks like this, although it's opposite of, of uh, uh, the Italian Rivera. <coughs> um, it's totally underdeveloped in a way. It's, it's very uh, de deforestated or it, 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 it just looks yeah, very rough. And uh, that's one of the things we will find out about. Uh, I mean, the, the question here is also, we were um, uh, cruising along that uh, coastline and we asked ourselves the question, why does it look like that? And we had the feeling that, or we have the feeling that in order to get some answers, not only about this place, but also get answers about the big uh, um, connection and like to understand to understand some 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 linkage, uh, some linked uh, things, or to, to understand the world as, as such, it's a, it would be an interesting topic to search for or to to show places and search for the specific answer on how or why does this place look like that? Um, not only to learn about this place, but to learn about the the broader perspective on on how things are connected and, and what, in the end, for that architectural example we showed, um, it was also, of course, it was also the question um, in how, how the architecture, why is the architecture that is built now, why does it look like that? I mean, and it was, as Leonard said, it was a lot of uh, calculations that the investor showed us, but it was very clear in the end. Um, House Langen is, this is a, um, the goal here is to build a house. This is the first building we are doing. And um, the goal here is to, to yeah, maybe to finish it even in 2011. It's an annex to a, a 50, uh, it's a, it's a semi-detached building, the one on the left. That is the one we are dealing with, and the, the one on the right has already been refurbished, and we are now dealing with the, with the left part. Um, it has some very nice details um, from the 50s, like the handrails on the, on the veranda, and it's, a, it's an interesting um, place, and we also like this. I mean, we don't like the 50s especially, but it has some nice, con uh, uh, nice uh, time capsules in it, so to say. And um, we are, the design is not finished, so we are going to show you how we are proceeding and how we are working toward uh, the finishing. And this is our, this was one of the first ideas. Um, we presented the, the clients, we presented a, our drawing of, of an annex. It's an it's a own building, a building itself, the one the long building you see between the, the garage and the house. And the, the house is a very, it has rooms like capsules. It's very closed in a way. So what we proposed is to build an, um, an annex that, that combines all the communal uh, places, all the, 
all the things where the family gathers. It's a family with two children. So it's the kitchen, it's the eating, and the living rooms. And we also try to, to convince them to, to make it wider, so because the sun comes from above, so it's uh, <laughs> from the top. So we try to make this uh, the building somehow stand out of the, the shadow of the, the old building. And um, that's why it's so long. And we are now in a process of, of and how in the drawing you see how we how we try to to show them what they how they could use the space for because it was a concern that the the garden they wanted to have a garden like the idea of a garden and you do whatever you do in a garden and they don't want to um, uh, cover it with building but we then try to convince and are still trying to convince them um, that all these uh, things they want to do they can easily do in inside the house or in a kind of a zone between garden and house. And that's how we now are developing an idea of, um, that looks even more built, but it's, um, it's the idea of finding, uh, uh, defining places where they, can, um, where they can do whatever they told us that they want to do. And also maybe where they can do things they don't even know yet that they will do them, um, but um, so this is, we call it a, a, an idea of, of interiority. We are trying here to, to work with spaces, inside spaces, to, not to see the house and the garden as something you are just, you have in your mind that you are uh, in the... Okay. Lawn more? that you lawn more <laughs> your garden <laughs> and like you're waving to your neighbor and this is your house and this is the garden and we are trying to think more about this um, what they actually want to have and, and more about an, a between uh, more about designing spaces that are between the interiority of the house and the exter exteriority of being 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 in the fresh air, so um, one part is the pergola. So which you see on the left, it's a it's a very long pergola, um, like the classical thing. Maybe maybe only covered on the roof. Then the the thing in the front is a peristyle, um, which we saw in a in a. It's a very classical theme. It's usually a, a in a courtyard. It's a column colonnade courtyard in, in, in Roman uh, uh, architecture, but there is one example in, in Berlin by um, uh, Peter Behrens, it's a house vegant, and he put the peristyle outside, in front, he put it in front of the house, and it's a very interesting um, setting, of course, this is very classical, and it's also very um, material consuming to make it like that, so we wouldn't do it like that, we are more thinking about, you see the trees here on, on the wall, this would be, for example, something we could think of, of, of closing or not closing, but creating a space that is um, an entrance space, a courtyard, an open courtyard, um, connecting these different types of, of, of uh, spaces in the, um, in the, in the house. And, but this is work in progress, so it's not at all uh, finished and it's just to give you an idea of how we, whenever we think of real architecture, how we think then. <laughs> next goal. Yeah. Next goal is, is a little bit different. <coughs> um, it actually, um, to print the book, we, we bought a printing machine. So we actually did the book ourselves, and uh, it it um, it works like like a proper uh, um, offset printing machine, like a big printing machine. But it actually looks like uh, looks more like a like a copying machine, and you can also <coughs> copy something with it. And, uh, 
uh, yeah, that's the thing right there on, on the left. Um, and uh, since we uh, are interested, uh, probably or nearly equally, equally as much in books as we are in uh, architecture, we are thinking of having um, a little publishing house called Replica Books, which which um, uh, republishes um, with that printing machine um, uh, old old books which are out of print, but we find very interesting. But what we would do is that we actually wouldn't put, make a new edition of it, but actually copy the first edition of that. It will look a little bit different, um, and it, it's best for text-based books. Um, um, but that's something we have on our list. Um, there's, for example, uh, Garden Cities of Tomorrow by Ebenezer Howard, uh, which which uh, would be a, a good contender for that. Um, so there actually is, once more, a nice copy of, of, of a book which holds precious content. And the interesting thing about the risograph is also that it's, it's only one color you can print at one time, and it's a soy bean uh, ink, so it's very, you can, and, and also the, the matrizen, like the thing you're printing with, it's made of uh, um, a vegetable fiber, so it's very, it's a very uh, eco-friendly thing. Uh, it, that, it's not the reason why we bought it, but um, it comes with it, and that's fine for us. <laughs> The next project to be completed uh, this year um, is the Encyclopedia of Reinventing Construction. It, that's actually one of the projects that most likely will not be finished uh, this year, but hopefully the year after. But we are going to work on it uh, this coming year. Um, and it's actually, it's sort of a second part of something that we uh, already started and that we all also have with us with us, it's actually um, um, that, uh, I that illustrated index of reinventing construction that we did um, was part of uh, the book Reinventing Construction, that's the book we have with us, and um, it's basically a collection of, um, of things, of entries, that we think um, are interesting for everybody who wants to reinvent construction, that means everybody who wants to um, to work in the field of construction and architecture and be part of the invention of, of new things. So um, what we actually collected in that, in that index, which was in that book only 100 pages, so it was like the start, um, with 250 entries, was um, entries um, in the fields of, uh, like of vernacular architecture examples, um, physical principles that are interesting, for example, if you want to ventilate a building, um, and um, technological um, news, like new materials, um, new techniques of energy production and um, energy saving and energy storage. Um, all these things that we are all interested in, or we should all be interested in. And um, uh, what we did in that book was um, we collected all these uh, entries and um, uh, we made drawings, and um, these drawings um, are supposed to, to illustrate um, uh, techniques or, or working principles. And um, uh, what we also collected was, um, was images, and um, we put them together to these um, uh, image tableaus that uh, you can see in the book. You can look at the book later if you are interested in that. But um, now um, I, I am giving you a short um, it's 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 hard to explain actually what what the index is really about. So I'm I'm going to give you a short um, oversight uh, or or actually a short um, um, try uh, of uh, what uh, you can find in the index. There's for example this project, which uh, is called Makani Power, and um, it's a it's a new way of uh, of gaining energy. Um, it's basically um, the idea is basically taken from a, from, a, from a windmill and from the fact that um, 
most of the energy that is produced by a windmill is actually produced at the very um, tips of the wing. So um, the idea of Makani power is to take that energy exactly from that very efficient um, part of the windmill, from the tip, um, by um, having a, a kite that is circling um, in that track of the, of the, of the usual uh, windmill tip. And um, the smart thing about it is that you are saving a lot of material because you don't need that windmill anymore, anymore but just the kite that is circling in the wind. And um, you, can, you can actually get a lot more energy and you have very little equipment and you can move and you can um, go wherever the wind is at that moment. And um, here's an image that shows one of the prototypes um, working already. Um, and another example is, uh, that's, that's an example of, uh, of the vernacular um, building. Uh, we think that there is a lot of very interesting vernacular examples um, because they're always very, um, they're very tangible and um, they always use, on the one hand they use very simple physical principles, but um, on the other hand they're always very sophisticated in the way they are they are dealing with um, with the situation. They are dealing with the place they are at, and with the with their environment and with the resources. So, um, I mean, uh, we all know the the, the igloo, but um, in that in that book, for us, it's important to explain once again these these um, these ideas to um, and to visualize them, so they can actually be maybe they can be reu reused in some way. So. Um, the idea of the igloo is um, that um, the inside is stepped, so um, uh, the cold air can sort of build like a like a lake um, in that entrance area here. And um, um, what it does is that, um, of course, if you if you go further up the step, the the air gets warmer and warmer. So you collect the cold air in one area, and um, it, you have a warmer area um, on the step. And these are, on the left you can see that, that, um, that entrance that is below ground where the cold air is collected and um, in the right image you can see that stepped uh, uh, interior. And that's another, that's, a, that's an example of a, of a contemporary project. And um, in, in, with that example it's just maybe interesting that uh, sometimes it helps to actually visualize um, something uh, because um, what, what we found interesting about the project is actually the way that it was built, the way that it was constructed, because uh, the architects um, invented their own construction technique to actually build that project. And um, what they did, it's a, it's a concrete building, and what they did was um, sort of building up a mold um, that on the inside is made from straw bales and uh, on the outside from uh, um, just soil. And they did it, as they couldn't do it at once, they did it like step by step and they, they put concrete and then they heightened the, the straw, ball, uh, straw bale interior mold and um, they heightened the, the soil mold from the outside and step by step they built up um, that building and then of course in the end it was all covered with a soil and then they could like dig it out like a truffle and um, that uh, straw from the inside was actually um, eaten out by, um, by a cow. So, um, and that's what, that's, that's the building. I, I guess many of you know the building, but I think it gets very um, tangible the moment that you, that you know exactly how it, how it was uh, created. Um, shall I show more? Or, shall we? <coughs> Two more. <laughs> um, this is a, a, this is sort of a it's a it's a technological principle and this is one of the examples. It's actually it, it was not invented for architects. It wasn't invented for architecture, but in a way it, it's it, it could be interesting to use it in architecture. It's it's the idea of an artificial muscle. It's um, it basically works um, with um, with a silicon layer that is um, mutually plated with silver. And the moment you put um, uh, electric current on it, the two silver plates, they want to get together and um, that way they stretch the silicone uh, so it actually gets longer. So that's, it's sort of, um, 
Like usually you would use uh, a little uh, motor to, to make uh, electric energy into a movement and this is another way and it has, it has positive, um, uh, th there's things that, um, that make it interesting for architecture, like for example it can carry uh, very um, high uh, weights um, and also it is very, it doesn't, you don't have to, um, ex it, it's only one part, there's nothing that, that can, that has to be exchanged or anything. And I, I can I mean, you could use it in, I don't know, like uh, like shading or, or in very small um, um, environments also. Yeah, and then the last example is just uh, is is, the, is illustrating the fact that we also thought it would be it, it's important to illustrate um, physical principles that we actually all know, but if you explain them again, sort of. Um, it, Maybe it inspires someone to um, to like reuse it again. It's the the Bernoulli effect, and um, uh, the, the the way we explained it in, in the graphic is uh, is taken from an uh, from there's a, there's a under there's a submarine uh, worm, and um, uh, that submarine worm uh, eats uh, tiny animals from the um, from the water, and um, the fact that um, the the current of water um, has less space on the right. Um, uh, according to the Bernoulli effect, that means that um, it has to accelerate, and that also means that um, the pressure is lower, and that's the reason why it actually goes through that um, house of the worm and um, actually feeds the worm or provides it with fresh water and um, food. So that was uh, that was the examples, and um, and like I said. Um, the, the, the final goal is to actually make a book that is not only 100 pages, like the part that we did in the existing book, but like really make it a thick encyclopedia of entries. And um, it might happen maybe next year that it's uh, completed. And uh, the way we are working on it now and trying to find new entries is actually that we um, started, uh, that we launched this website. Um, uh, we did it together with uh, Ilka, uh, Ilka and Andreas Ruby, and um, because they, they were the publishers of the of the first book, and um, so what we are doing with that website is actually first we put on all our content, so you can go on the website and check out all these um, examples. Um, but what you can also do is um, add more examples, like if if you read that and think, oh, but there's actually one thing that is that is even more interesting, or that's even newer, or I don't know, um, you can just upload it and other people might comment or, um, yeah, and like, so that's, that's sort of a test. We don't know if it works, but um, we hope. And um, if you want to be part of it, visit the website and add entries. Convinced that uh, architecture has to work with all these parameters of how how to deal with the with the um, with the wind and with the embodied energy and with the the, the people and all this the vernacular the tradition. There are so many things that you should um, actually incorporate in your design, and um, we see it as a um, as a as a step toward that that goal of. of um, having an architecture that is consciously um, respecting all this, uh, all this matter, all these parameters. I mean, it's par it's it's in a way parametric parametrical design, but not in the way that we are using the the computer as uh, as the tool that is in the end designing the building, but it's. Um, um, it's respecting the the parameters as something we try to incorporate in our design. All right. Um, once more, um, this is maybe not even all that interesting for you. <clears throat> it's just that uh, having opened up that little architectural office that we have something fantastic, we, we also um, <coughs> do um, 
a lot of other stuff, which is more actually art direction or creative direction. Also, all the books we designed ourselves, the, the books that are here today, but we also also help um, uh, some commercial clients with uh, their uh, uh, art direction needs, basically some uh, fashion companies, and that's. Maybe that's interesting to know because that is where where kind of most of our funding right now comes from for all the other fun, fun things that we do, um, and we have to kind of separate that I think more clearly. So that's a goal for us here, um, uh, um, keeping a, a straight separation in businesses uh, between Belgrad, the, the the creative agency, and. Uh, and something fantastic, the architectural practice. Um, pet space is uh, something we want to... Um, we also started this... Uh, this is a project that started in the, while we were doing the book. Um, it's, uh, it's, we won't finish it this year, but we want to work on it. Um, it's, um, it's the idea of collecting spaces that are neglected or that are not um, not uh, seen as a valuable space in the city, but that are uh, big enough for creative uh, um, use or for for something you could you, you cannot build houses on. It's it's about plots that are so small that you cannot build in a regular way. So you can you have to think about it more more and more. And um, the, the pet space, of course, the name is derived by this, uh, uh, by Atelier Bawa from Japan that created that name to, to categorize all these very, very small, tiny um, commercials that are taking place in Tokyo. Um, but we, we would like to, to establish something like that in, in Berlin as well and, and use it not only for our uh, um, interests but to, to create something that that is really a space and um, there's another uh, German office that is um, Brandelhuber is the office and, and that building for example was built uh, 15 years ago in Cologne on a 2 meter 2 meter 65 centimeter wide spot and it doesn't have any structural uh, vertical elements. It's whole, the, the the floors are held by the neighboring walls. So they had to make a contract with the neighbors that whenever the neighbors want to tear down their apartment, then Brandelhuber has to pay to also tear down his apartment because it's it's uh, um, subsidized by the neighboring apartments. But we like, I mean, this we started all this in the. Um, on in our project, and this is maybe again, it's about asking questions. We we were asking these questions to ourselves, but then we we try to find people um, that are dealing with these spaces. And this is an email uh, correspondence we've had with uh, the officials in in Berlin, and there is actually a, um, a municipal um, office dealing with that kind of spaces and um, we we now are slowly in in a contact and and we he's um, the guy that's responsible for that is trying to find more uh, spaces more places that we might use and the first places he um, he proposed to us were really big so it was uh, I don't know why there's no commercial use uh, for it, but it was way too big for us. I mean, we thought about really tiny spaces. And now now we are in this process, and we hope that in 2011 we get a little bit closer to the to the goal of um, really being the, the, also being maybe the investor of, of such a building. I mean, to do it all at our office. And that leads us. Yeah. Oh, no. That's another thing. <laughs> that's another thing. Um, yeah, that's, that's um, Kaffee Oro 
is um, a project that we would really like to realize this year. Actually, we wanted to realize it last year already and the year before. And the idea always comes up um, at a certain time of the year, which is early spring, because um, Berlin is very, like the, the climate is pretty un uncomfortable in a way um, in early spring and in um, autumn because sometimes it's very nice and sunny but it's just very cold and um, it is also very very windy like um, this uh, area is um, sort of new it's um, it's uh, we used to have a very centrally located airport that was closed and um, it's now just a crazy big vast space in uh, Berlin and people are actually interested in the space and they're using it and they're doing whatever sports can be done on a plane and um, but this is the image pretty much shows that uh, time of the year like it's very sunny but as you see people are wearing a lot so it's really cold so um, uh, then every year we we um, we wish for um, the place where you can actually enjoy the sun but you are protected from the wind and um, you can maybe even use the, the greenhouse effect, that um, mean uh, effect that can actually be really nice if it's, uh, if it's used in the right uh, context. And so um, the idea is to put up um, a greenhouse that um, works especially in those times of the year and um, maybe um, make it a cafe where you can just like enjoy the first um, rays of sunlight um, and um, have a coffee. and. Um, yeah, there's no client who um, asked us for that, it's just us who want that. So um, what we basically have to do is um, find, um, yeah, find a way of funding it, find a way of uh, uh, getting a place, uh, find a way of realizing it, uh, hopefully this year. And, ah yeah, that's actually, <laughs> that's actually, um, yeah, in a way that, um, idea is, um, is, is typical for Berlin because um, what we found when uh, being interested in that uh, idea of a, of a greenhouse cafe is that it actually existed already um, more than 100 years ago. Um, this picture was taken uh, in Berlin and it shows these uh, so-called greenhouse cafes um, that used to be around. So, um, yeah. It, it's in a way typical, as well as it's also typical to um, maybe more like right now, it's pretty typical in Berlin um, to start something um, by yourself. Um, because actually a lot of projects that we really like in Berlin um, were initiated by the architect or by a group of people um, around an architect um, that just found a place where they wanted to build something special and just started it. So it's actually uh, it looks very, um, in a way, unrealistic, also because the visualization looks a little like um, uh, spontaneous, but it's not that unlikely that things like that could happen, I think. We'll see. Yeah, and actually to make them more realistic, um, we... Um, founded a company called Novel Ter Territories, which is basically a limited, German limited company, together with a, with a um, real estate fund manager. Um, so, um, yeah, again, this is, is more, more fuss, but it, it kind of it puts the legal framework uh, into place for us to actually be able to realize things like the Café Rome uh, or, or also if, uh, if, if, if we find a, a pet space we want to use, we will be able to. So, yeah, this three more to go. Last Plans is a project we will finish uh, this year. We already started last year. Um, it's, uh, it's stories of houses in the vicinity of a, a very nice building in Belgium. Um, the picture you see here is us being the guests of the two people uh, on, on the right. 
and they um, they refurbished their house and it was a commission done by um, 51 N 4 E <laughs> um, a, a Belgium uh, a Belgium firm a very interesting firm and and they did a very nice renovation on this house and these two guys are art collectors and they invite uh, they invite artists over to their uh, place and usually they they stay in that time they stay in their studio in, in Paris and the artists can do whatever they want uh, with their house with a newly refurbished house and um, but in this time they they stayed and we were their guests and um, we are invited to there's there's a book uh, going to be published on all these artists, uh, all, all these art pieces that um, that are generated in that house, and we are one of the artists, we three, and um, uh, we are dealing with the. Um, we are so our plan is to to look at the neighborhood of the building, and um, we have an image of of Belgium that is. Of course, for or maybe René Magritte, for example, was something that came immediately into our mind when we when we thought about the suburbs of Belgium or Belgian countryside and that um, surreal paintings and the somehow very the very normal but also very weird situations uh, um, that. Came, can can exist there and um, so we call it lost plans because we are going to um, make plans that are not actually that do not exist um, but we invent them for these situations we actually found there so um, I mean something of course you find there a lot is the hedges um, we don't know. We don't know about the stories yet. I mean, we are going to show you some of these things we found there, and we think that are interesting or that could become a story. I mean, this is the only exception because this tower you see in the back, in the middle, is a. Um, it really exists and it really has a strange plan behind it because it's used for bow and arrow shooting, but as there was not enough space to do it horizontally, they build the tower, so they do it vertically, so they shoot on something on the roof. And that's one of these stories that you, you couldn't come up with this, um, but it exists. Um, and the other, yeah, the other stories, it's just some images. We, we have a huge collection now of, of buildings, um, and uh, we're going to see what what strange plan could be behind that building? Um, it's also something that is, in in a way, it's it's again uh, connected to the to the idea of how to um, how to communicate architecture or architectural plans. Because in the end, the audience of that won't be uh, won't be necessarily architects. I mean, it it will be a piece about planning, about architecture that could be interesting for 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 any person um, yeah not only architects and and one thing or the pitch that we did um, that we actually uh, so how we got the commission to do that was was this house we saw a bill uh, a picture of this house which is also in the, in the neighborhood and we came up with the story of a um, of a plan that there was uh, there should be a huge uh, new town and all the buildings should face toward one central building and the, 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 the inventor of this uh, new town he had to, in order to get clients or to convince people he built one row, one of these radial rows and, um, but it was all facade, only the first three buildings were actually built but of course it didn't work out so in the end he sold it and then uh, a very wealthy uh, farmer bought it and he put, uh, um, I think it was a swimming pool for Olympic uh, training in there. And so in the end, in the end, we invented that to, if you see that picture, so 
for example, why the door, this white door is such high, the reason was the swimming pool that was inside, <laughs> and um, why, why there are three, or you, you have the idea that there were three houses or even more, but now it became like this one house, so it's, it's in the end to, to make up a plan that is, um, that could really be the, the, the plan that made that actual situation happen. But of course, um, maybe the real situation is way stranger than we can think about it. Um, here, uh, the apartment, that's the place we work out of. That's, that's our office. Um, and uh, it's, it's in a typical uh, uh, like mid-century, uh, no, uh, not mid-century, turn of the century, turn of the century uh, residential building in Berlin. Uh, in a by now kind of rundown area um, called Schöneberg, um, which used to be the poshest area of Berlin. It's it's quite close to the to the Tiergarten, but then, like, in the 20s somehow, when the Kurfürstendamm became more prominent, <clears throat> the rich people kind of immigrated there. But we found this. It, it's a huge place, it's 500 square meters, and it's basically a one uh, living uh, space for one family, and it, and it still has the original structure intact. Like, um, you, you have all the representative uh, buildings up front there. Um, the, the, the big dining room, which always was kind of... Uh, in size, executed for having easily 20 people dine there. That was like the, usually I think the people ate in that small little thing over there when they were alone in the, in the, in the square box next to it, uh, there. Um, and then then the, the tile thing is the kitchen and the thing in between was the, was the uh, uh, preparation room for the food. And then, then you had the maidens' rooms, and then in the in the back you had the living quarters. Actually, it was a little bit bigger when when there was a, a family living there. Um, it was like three rooms more. Um, but uh, this is it's a, that's the place which kind of gives us the opportunity to do our own printing and uh, so on. Um, but uh, or also have like. Uh, like once more, uh, little events. This was last Saturday where, where we had um, some uh, young architects from Catalonia uh, visiting us and uh, Matthias Bretka from Raum Taktik was holding a lecture. You can't really see that much. But um, uh, that's that nice little space, but it, it's kind of run down. Uh, and, and we're very envious of this great kitchen you have here, over there. That's that's one of the things we're also trying to um, get done in 2011. I mean, uh, one reason why we showed you the apartment is also because, um, of course, we cannot really afford the apartment, but um, it's uh, sometimes... Uh, rented out for uh, shootings for photographers. So that's, it's again a way of an entrepreneurial uh, step for us of uh, how to deal with this. Uh, I don't know if it's an, not that easy situation in Berlin. It's also a very free situation of, of being an architect in Berlin. I mean, um, so it's, we showed you the apartment to show you how, how we, we work as entrepreneurs as well. And, and the last, last uh, thing is something referring to the beginning. It's the Dumpling Express that you saw in one of these drawings. And we, we built that uh, thing for our diploma thesis and um, it works. It's, it's a solar collector. Um, it's a bicycle, a storage and a solar collector. Um, and we built that 
to to in order to cook, be very flexible for uh, cook dumplings, that Chinese street food, um, wherever we want to. So we wanted to bring that little thing somewhere in the city and uh, make a kind of a immediate uh, um, uh, dining or, or lunch room out of an empty spot or some, I don't know. And um, so we did it and it works. But the problem is that we need to get concessions for it. <coughs> and we don't have that yet. We want to have it. And also we want to maybe give it to a street vendor um, to really work with that kind of thing. Because for us, by that time, and, and it's, st it's still in our office, and uh, by that time it was mainly a, um, like a metaphor for how architecture could, how easy we could um, work with uh, um, renewable energies and, and also how beautiful it is to work in that kind of state of, of uh, deficiency and, and work with simple materials and, and also to learn from the so-called third world and because that's very typical for um, usually it's sold in this third world it's produced here but sold in the third world and uh, the, the guy that was I mean, there was a very nice situation. We just stepped out of the university, and as you saw in the pictures, people were immediately getting interested in it, and they wanted to know how the, how does that work, and, and what is it. And this guy was very especially interested in, in I don't know if it was the Elena or the Dumpling Express, but um, it was really nice to see how people reacted on it. We, we even went to a park with it and then we, we made dumplings and there was the police coming and um, there's a rule in Berlin, you, you, it's not allowed or it's only allowed in very specific areas to, to grill and uh, we were in the, one of these areas that grilling is not allowed and uh, then everybody who was grilling was sent away and then they came to us and then they um, talked about the, the, the dumpling express and they couldn't decide, and is it like what? Then the, somehow they were not. They were standing like five meters in front of us, and um, I know ten minutes later they came to us and asked us, "Is it actually smoking or is it steaming?" <laughs> it's only steaming. And then they went back, and then they came one minute later and said, "It's okay. You can stay." <laughs> it was a very nice. Okay. Yeah, this is. Um, we, we put this also in the in the end to, to um, get back to the beginning because this is uh, one of the projects that we proposed in the book and that we pretty much also realized because it's built and but like the last step um, is pending the the moment where we are actually allowed to go um, and officially publicly, publicly um, sell dumplings with it and uh, this is sort of uh, uh, the symbol for the fact that we are still working on, on, on realizing um, the ideas that we um, proposed in the book and um, that it's sort, of, uh, it's, it's sort of an ongoing process like this is what we're trying to do um, cut the coming year but um, maybe new things will um, come out of it and it will yeah, it will go on in a way. But this this book actually um, um, posed us a lot of uh, tasks and questions. Um, yeah, that's what I to Yeah, that's it so far. If you have questions, please. Thank you very much.